Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this tutorial, you're going to learn how to use loops. So loops are a way for you to repeat an action un until something happens or until a condition is satisfied. So you learned about conditions earlier. Now let's talk about loops. So one way we can use this is by changing the costume of our sprite. So the best way to do this is to dive in so let's say we have a sprite a bird a parrot so this um, this particular sprite has different costumes so it's so a is where the wings are up B wings are down so when this is fast enough it looks like you're flying it looks like it is flying so we want um, we want this to look like it's flying as we move our arrow keys from right left up and down so let's just go through the aesthetics let's say it's a in a forest or in a jungle there you go and this is too big um we want let's say it's half that size okay there you go so the parrot is half that size so just to get this out of the way when this when the flag is clicked we want this to be in this position. So set, so you've learned this in the first tutorial, set X here, set Y here, and for, you can just say show, you know, show, show a parrot and then set. So let's say when you move this, and there you go. All right, but it's not moving, right? It's not, it's not looping. So how do we do that? This is where we use, these kinds of controls so let's take this this says it repeat some action 10 times so you want the parrot to change costume or to change its appearance so that's gonna be under looks and switch costume or next costume it's the same next costume so when you click this oops so did you see that Okay, let's remove the backdrop for a sec so that it's clearer. Um, how do I remove this? Oh, there you hide. Oh, you can't. Ah, anyway, so let's go back to the sprite. But you can hide the sprite. There you go. So, okay, there you go. It, it moved that costume or it changed the costume 10 times. Let's slow it down a bit so we can keep up. So this is where wait one second or X second comes in handy. So when you click this, okay, one, one. So you can do the count, right? So let's say stop, do the count. One, two, three, four. It's too slow. So let we, we want to wait around half that time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Alright, so now it looks more natural, but then it stops at 10 seconds and it's not even moving when this is clicked. So, but when we click this, okay, yeah, it's doing its thing. So we want that flapping to be more natural. We want that to happen the entire time we're playing this game. So one way you can do this is to use this forever. So meaning repeat until the game ends or until you put stop or until you know they're game over or something but the point is it's not gonna repeat until until a certain number of times it's gonna repeat forever until the game is over for example so okay let's just dis disconnect that and when we do this instead of repeat 10 and there you go our bird is flapping away more than 10 times so you want that when this is clicked, our bird is flapping away. So of course to do that is to connect the, that block. And there we go. Now let's do the things you've you've done in the first lesson, which is move um move move this when arrows are are clicked. So let's just do it quick quickly. Up arrow, it will change Y. Change Y by 10. Duplicate. For down arrow, negative 10. Yep, you're right. Negative 10, if you got that correctly. 
duplicate for right arrow so delete this and you want to change x this time by 10 of course and then when it's left you want to change x by to 10 negative 10 correct so let's do this right oops and right it's duplicated so the best way for you to detect if something is wrong if there is a bug is when you test it so let's see if there's a bug up arrow yep it's still moving right there you go down looks so great and left so let's try to add another sprite and this time you want the ar the parrot to eat something and then once it's eaten it disappears so how do we do that so let's just stop this for a while let's add another sprite so let's say an apple something that it can eat again too big let's decrease the size so we want the apple to to not be in a specific position right you want it to be i we want it to disappear rather when the parrot um gets to to the apple because it signifies that it's being eaten so to do that um we want to use sensing right so sensing is um, it helps you do something when the sense is like touching or this changes to the color or sight so or it's dragged loudness or hearing so all the five senses right so the conditions are here so we want this to disappear if it's hit if it's touching there you go touch so if it's touching the parrot you want it to disappear but it's a diamond so this is supposed to be a condition if it's a diamond it's a condition and you want it to um so when it's clicked so when this is clicked it's always supposed to be there so we want the parrot to to do something so if it's touching the parrot then we want it to disappear so Sorry, that's i'm having trouble connecting to the internet it looks like an so issue with the router and echo device so try restarting them unplug both of them then plug the router back in wait 30 seconds so the looks Once the router um so sorry about that so if the parrot is touching the apple then we want it oops where's the apple want it to hide if it's touching the parrot but it's not working quite as expected because it's already hiding so you want that when this is clicked the the apple is showing so we want to reset that okay cool and then when the parrot hits you oops it's not working correctly maybe you want to do this it's not working correctly why is that because when this is clicked it's showing and then hiding so it's not working correctly so we'll try to use another control and the the correct control is wait until so this is another type of loop meaning um do something until this happens right so so meaning this so apple show yourself until the parrot is touching you and when that happens hide so let's try it show first and then wait until parrot is touching and hide there you go but we want it to be connected right we want that once it's touching it should disappear so this is disconnected from the main thing so you want to connect it but connecting it it's not doing that um what is expected and there you go but you don't want the apple to be in that same place in that same position it's going to be very boring it's just one straight line so we want to randomize that position and we have this block go to mouse pointer parrot random position so once you do this we can now ask 
the parrot to fly around using the arrow keys we set earlier and once it's touching and there you go it it hides signifying that the apple has been eaten now we can get creative we can add sounds chomp sound there oh it's cool so to do that um sound and play no no we want it to play the sound okay oops <laughs> and so flying 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 and once it's hit uh, and then there's the sound so it's very creative it's just a simple game it allows um, there's a bit of a challenge to it because it's randomized and there is that interaction saying that okay you've eaten it because it's being hidden and it's playing a sound and this is made possible because of the loop so wait until this happens so until the parrot again until the parrot hits it it's just in position stay in position so that's a loop stay in position position until you're eaten until you're you're sensing the parrot at the same time change your costume forever this is a loop do this forever next costume wait 0.5 seconds next costume so up down up down and there you go this is the basics of using a loop in a fun and interactive way with scratch programming thank you so much